The US mortgage market just collapsed again in what is an ominous sign for the housing market in 2024. It suggests that home prices will need to go down. It suggests that lots of people in the real estate industry are unfortunately going to be laid off. This is a historic decline in the mortgage market that you guys need to be paying attention to. With a new report from the Mortgage Bankers Association showing that the mortgage purchase application index just plummeted 19 percent from where it was one year ago. That decline means that home buyers are applying for mortgages now at the lowest rate in almost 30 years. With the average monthly purchase index now averaging 156, you can see that that's down 19 percent year over year. It's also down 40 percent from pre-pandemic levels. It's lower than the 2008 crash and yes now it's at the same level of mortgage demand as the mid-1990s. And ultimately what this suggests is that the spring housing market is going to be a ghost town, everyone. These historically low levels of mortgage purchase applications today mean that we're gonna have very few home buyers closing on homes in the spring, which is something that I think is gonna put downward pressure on home prices, particularly in the states where home prices are already exhibiting the most downward momentum. Now, at this point in the housing cycle, there's lots of people out there who are skeptical that home prices are actually gonna decline meaningfully. After all, people like myself and other housing market pundits have been talking about a housing crash for the last three years. To this point, it's something that's only occurred in a handful of markets. So what could be the powder keg to cause these prices to decline? Well, we have on one side of the equation, a big decline in mortgage applications, which means a big decline in buyer demand for the spring. However, what we're also seeing now on the supply side of the spectrum is an increase in mortgage defaults for existing homeowners something that could cause more inventory and forced selling to hit the market this year as well. With the Mortgage Bankers Association also reporting that mortgage delinquencies increased in the fourth quarter of 2023. They showed that the overall delinquency rate for mortgage loans on residential properties increased to 3.88%. They note that while the overall delinquency rate is still very low compared to historical averages, the pace of new loans entering delinquency picked up and some loans moved into later stages of delinquencies. And in particular, they break out these mortgage delinquencies by different loan types and they observe a big increase in delinquencies on what's called FHA loans. The delinquency rate on FHA loans is now up to 11% which is well above its pre-pandemic level, which is concerning. That suggests we could be seeing more FHA buyers who are those first time home buyers who put like 3% down. We could be seeing more of them head into foreclosure over the next year. And I think the thing that has me concerned and that should have you guys concerned out there is that not only are we seeing the mortgage delinquencies increase, right? Like, you know, they're going up bit by bit, but we're also seeing credit card defaults also increase at the same time. And this is something I've talked to you guys about on this channel over the last one to two months, the big uptick in credit card defaults. And the fact that like both of those things are happening at the same time in conjunction with an increase in auto loan defaults is something that's telling you that the consumer in America is not very healthy. The consumer is starting to bend and in some cases, the consumer is breaking. With CNBC reporting that credit card delinquencies surged in 2023, indicating financial stress, uh, according to the New York Federal Reserve. The New York Fed, who observed a credit card delinquency increase of more than 50% in 2023, as consumer debt swelled to 17.5 trillion. And what was of particular concern in this report was a graph called transition into 30-day delinquency by loan type. Take a look at this, everyone. We have credit cards in blue. Transition into 30-day delinquency has spiked now way above pre-pandemic levels. At the same time, auto loan delinquency rates are also surging now slightly above pre-pandemic levels, while at the same time we see the mortgage delinquencies, they are going up at a slower pace and are now approaching pre-pandemic levels. So we have increases in delinquency rates pretty much across the board, except for student loans, which is something that we know is gonna also come down the pike in 2024 as the forbearance periods expire. And I say this to you all not to scare you out there, not to say that there's going to be huge financial calamity, but to simply point out that uh, U.S. consumers and American homeowners are struggling to pay their bills. When you see the trifecta of increasing credit card, auto, and mortgage loan defaults, you know that something is going on in the background, something not so good, that will likely propel more housing inventory 
onto the market in 2024. Because that's ultimately what's been the missing piece from this housing downturn for you guys out there as home buyers is the fact that the housing inventory hasn't increased enough on a nationwide basis to cause the type of home price declines that are needed to make uh, housing more affordable. And so 2024 could be the year where we start to see that happen at a point in time where the demand to buy is still at rock bottom levels and is unlikely to improve. The lack of affordability is just so bad right now. And even in some markets where the prices have started to drop, it's still just really difficult for buyers to contend with the current market. For instance, I want you guys to take a look at this house. I picked this house here because it's a great example of what's going on in the market. It's a three bed, three bath, 2,200 square feet. It's listed for 550,000 a month. And if we take a look at the pictures, we can see it's like a relatively newer build. It was built in 2020. It's you know, kind of nice. This is just like your standard, like newly built home in the South. This house here is in Tennessee, but I'm sure you guys, if you live in Texas or Florida or even Utah, you probably recognize uh, a house that looks like this and it's 550,000. But really concerns me here, folks, is that monthly payment. When we go down to the monthly payment, we can see that at a 6.8% mortgage rate, which is actually kind of uh, slightly below where the mortgage rates are today, your monthly payment's 3,300 a month or $40,000 a year, which is absolutely crazy, everyone. In an area where the median income is like 90 to 100,000, people can't afford $40,000 a year for a payment on what it basically is like a starter home almost. And ultimately the real issue there and the real issue in the housing market more broadly is actually the home prices. It's not the mortgage rates per se because the 7% mortgage rate, yes, it's higher than it was four years ago or three years ago, but it's actually kind of normal compared to you know, the 30, 40 year trend. Rather what's different today is that the prices just went way out of control. With inflation adjusted home prices still resting near their highest level on record uh, based on their 130 year average, everyone. So take a look at this. This is 130 years of data on home prices in America according to the Case-Shiller Home Price Index adjusted for inflation. And you can see that basically from 1890 all the way to late 1990s, home prices did not really grow. Uh, adjusted for inflation, they stayed the same. But then starting in the late 90s and into the mid 2000s, we had a bubble, bubble number one, and that bubble came crashing down. And now we're in bubble number two, which has started to deflate, but it's still just really um, way too expensive. And you know, you look at this graph folks and it's very clear you know, what the problem is in the housing market, it's prices. And this is something that I think a lot of you guys out there watching, you intuitively understand this point, right? You guys intuitively understand that it's not so much the mortgage rate that's the problem, it's the home prices that's the problem. Because I just polled you guys on my YouTube channel here on the community board and I asked you a question that I thought was really interesting. I asked you, all other things equal, does the prospect of declining mortgage rates over the next one to two years make you more or less likely to want to buy a house today? Well, answering that question, only 11% of you said more likely to buy with rates going down, whereas 14% of you actually said less likely to buy if rates are going down because you're saying there's no rush if rates are dropping. However, the vast majority, 75% of you said doesn't make a difference. Prices are still too high. And that's an unfortunate reality that I think a lot of people in the housing market are still struggling to come to terms with. I think there's a lot of people in the industry, whether they're realtors or mortgage brokers or real estate investors that think there's gonna be some type of quick turnaround where you know, in a couple months, you know, they can buy into the market and you know, it's gonna be fine and everything's gonna reset. But just unfortunately, folks, that doesn't seem to be the case. We are now seeing widespread layoffs occur in the real estate industry. This is something that started in late 2022 and into 2023, but it's something that's still happening right now. You can see here, I just typed in mortgage layoffs into the Google News search and immediately we see Country Club Mortgage, which was a mortgage originator in California. They just laid off their employees, including their CEO, and are shuttering all their offices. This affects 105 staffers throughout California. In addition, we also have Atlanta-based Crescent Mortgage Company is now shutting down, laying off all their employees. Something we're also seeing occur for realtors as well. 
I started reporting to you guys about a year ago how realtors were starting to quit due to the low home sale environment. Well, now this is a situation that's starting to accelerate. With the National Association of Realtors just putting out a report on their membership. Basically, if you become a realtor, you gotta become a member of the National Association of Realtors. And they're reporting that um, the number of realtors is down by 2.1% from where it was a year ago. They've lost 32,000 realtors. And this is something that the National Association of Realtors folks expects to continue. Read this, everyone. This kind of surprised me. They're saying that most state and local realtor associations should anticipate further declines in membership over the next 24 months based on the lag effect of past housing cycles. So think about that, folks. The NAR, they're predicting realtors are gonna drop out for the next two years, at least, and we're gonna to need to see prices drop by a lot for there to be a recovery in transaction volume and for you know the people in the real estate industry to start making money again. Now, on that note, where do I think home prices could go down the most over the next year? Um, basically giving buyers the most relief and helping get buyers back into the market through those declines. Well, to answer that question, I'm gonna consult for you guys a new home price forecast score I developed here at ReVenture Consulting. This home price forecast score uses five different data inputs to project and predict the future direction of home prices over the next 12 months in every state, county, metro, and zip code in America. So if you're a home buyer investor out there who's trying to understand the market, maybe you're you know one of the handful of people who's still looking to buy right now, you're gonna wanna pay attention to this data because it's gonna give you some solid direction on where your market could head in the next year. And this is a score ranked zero to 100 with the lower the score, the greater the likelihood that prices are going down. And the state that has the lowest score in America is Texas. Texas has a lowest score of 42, indicating downward price pressure. Texas is now a buyer's market. You can see here on the historical graph, during the pandemic, it was a seller's market, no longer. It's a buyer's market due to increases in inventory, increases in price cuts, and lower home price appreciation. Now, of course, you can see that there's some big differences in terms of where you go in Texas. Uh, as far as how much home prices might decline and the likelihood that they're gonna decline over the next year. So you guys are gonna to have to go on ReVenture app and look at not only this data for your state, but also your metro, as well as your zip code, everyone. Because this is the thing that shocked me. This absolutely shocked me, is how much housing markets differ by neighborhood. You know, real estate, it's hyper-local. And I think a lot of people think out there that, you know, what's happening in Dallas or Atlanta or Los Angeles or New York as a metro means like, is what's happening in their neighborhood. And the answer is that's actually not the case. Like here in Dallas, you can see we actually have positive home price scores on the north side of town, like 59, 57, indicating upward price momentum in these zip codes. Whereas we have really low scores, like 27, another 27, a 29 south of Dallas indicating downward price pressure. And so if you're a buyer, you have to know what these data points are in your neighborhood. Because otherwise, you're flying blind when you go to buy a house. Otherwise, you're just relying on whatever the realtor says to you or whatever you read in a news headline on CNBC. Rather, it's better for you to know what the underlying data is saying so you can make a more informed decision. I wanna quickly point you to Florida before I do a couple other markets. We can see here in Florida, we actually have some fairly low scores uh, towards the center of Florida, like in Lakeland, we got a 38. That is a low score, one of the lowest in America, suggesting downward price pressure in Lakeland. We have a 32 in Punta Gorda. We see a lot of blue in Florida. Uh, you guys gotta go on here and understand what your market looks like more specifically, because we're starting to see that Florida market turn and go down. We're still seeing a lot of downward price pressure in the mountain regions of America, as well as certain parts of California. And speaking of California, say we just go out to Southern California and see what that market looks like. We once again see big differences here. If we look at say Los Angeles versus Anaheim and Orange County, we see some downward price pressure here in LA, but then we see upward price pressure in certain parts of Orange County where some of these zip codes have a 62. Some of these zip codes were in a seller's market, dropped to a buyer's market, are now back in a buyer's market. So if you're in this zip code, 92618, in Orange County, we're saying to ourselves, look, recent appreciation, days on the market, inventory, price cuts, it's all saying there's still upward momentum on prices. So what do you do? 
if you're a buyer in that situation. Do you maybe jump in now if it looks like prices are gonna to continue to go up? Or is that just too discouraging? If you see prices are still gonna go up, maybe you say to yourself, I'm just gonna hold off. You have to kind of make that decision for yourself if you're a buyer, like if you wanna get into a market as it's growing or get into a market as it's declining. Because if it's declining, there'll be more deals, there'll be more opportunity. Whereas if it's going up, you know, you might have to pay a higher price if you wait another six to 12 months. And so what I would encourage you guys to do right now is go to www.reventure.app and type in your city. Just type in your city right away, hit the search button. You'll start by looking at different home values uh, in your city, but you can actually open up this Reventure Scores tab and switch to home price forecast and you will get immediately all the home price forecast data for the zip codes in your area and all the zip codes in America, data that you will be able to see historically over time and you'll also be able to see the different components of the scores. Now to access that full suite of data, you'll have to become a premium member. The cost of that subscription is $39 a month, which ultimately is pretty cheap compared to the price of buying a house and the increased certainty that you get looking at this data. Now, if you're someone who doesn't feel like you can afford or wanna spend, it's gonna really help you in terms of understanding your local housing market and how to make a better decision in 2024 about buying a house or investment property.